lip damage because uh, errors become way more apparent when you do that. And there's definitely some errors here. So what I would do, okay. So what I would normally do is I would take a second pass or something like this. I'm going tighter, so I have a little more control. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I've never been one of the people who does a great loose sketch that has all the expressiveness that you would look for in that sketch. Uh, I, I kind of tend to be the person who really has to work at it to get a drawing that has the appeal and expression. I always envy those guys that can do it, that it comes natural to them. For me, it's about hard work and just massaging the drawing into what you want it to be. So. There you go, that starts, and this second pass allows me to put a little more finesse into the drawing, a little more texture. You'll notice also that the way I draw uh, is not from my shoulder. Like a lot of people who do very well with working on Cintiqs tend to draw from their shoulders. And that translates very well into the Cintiq. But for someone like me, I tend to draw like this. And that, the Cintiq doesn't do too well with that. So I have to probably spend a little more time working on my Cintiq drawings than I would if I were working on paper. slowly coming back to me how this guy used to be put together. I, I can't believe how much detail goes into each drawing. And I almost can't believe that I have to animate this guy now. Um, That's about right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. Uh, jump back in time a little bit. And uh, actually, why don't we just leave this on and just move it over here. Kind of compose a little bit of a character sheet. Um, Here's, um, let's try to do a tantor. <laughs> let's start with a really loose sketch just to get an idea for what the pose would be. As usual, I run out of paper already.
And this first pass, I'm not really caring too much about how good things look. I'm just trying to get a sense of the attitude and the proportions of the character. This is where I allow myself to make a lot of mistakes, and that's all right. You know, I'll go back in later and I'll try to figure things out. Already I can see that he's too narrow. There you go, that's a little closer to reality. care for this tangent here. Let's flip it and yeah, there you go. Those mistakes become loud and clear the moment you flip it. So I'll do a second pass now just to try. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Just to try and get some of the finer detail in there. <coughs> the anatomy of Tantra is really weird. It's actually not as much, it doesn't have much to do with an actual elephant. But the point to this character was more about coming up with a character that felt neurotic. So you'll notice most elephants are actually built, you know, like this. The head is facing down. But when I was designing this character, it, it just didn't feel right to have him looking down all the time when in fact he had to feel like he was always scared of everything. So the first thing we did is we altered the anatomy of an actual elephant and we created this thing that's not really an elephant, but it was more character based it was more uh, the idea was to try and capture the personality more than be faithful to the anatomy of an elephant that really feels weird out the trunk dragging behind like that i think i'm just gonna cheat it and uh, bring it out here so we have a better silhouette A lot of the fun of Tantra was capturing that sense of skin. Uh, one thing that became very clear when we were researching elephants was that it's all about the skin and the bones. It's all about how it feels to, to put those together, you know? Another thing that we always tried to avoid was to have um, one of those um, cartoony depictions of an elephant, you know what I mean? Uh, where, where feel more like a water balloon, and you've seen those in other cartoons, I'm sure. It's starting to feel a little more like Tantor. Uh, he's got these huge husks, which I regretted designing it this way, <laughs> because then when you have to do dialogue, you have to move all this mass up and down, and it just became this nightmare. So, this is starting to feel a little better. So the one thing we we're trying to avoid is to end up with something. Let me let me just do this just to show you what I mean. Uh, something that felt like this. Just do everything into one shape. Because when you do that, you just lose all the anatomy for the elephant. So and we didn't want to be realistic either. So we had to find that middle ground that um, allowed us to make it feel like it was flesh and bones. And a lot of it has to do with soft angles, where you use your curves and your, where you use your angles. So you'll realize that, you know, everything that's hanging is a soft edge and everything that's, you know, where the skin will be pulling. We try to give that a few angles to show that there's a sense of bones up there. So I, I think I'm ready to go back and now start putting some detail in. And uh, this is even longer ago 
than Doppler. So I'm probably going to be very far off the actual design. But you'll forgive me because it's been such a long time. Feel free to correct me if you see I'm making some mistakes. Another difficult thing was how to integrate those tusks because the tusks do come from the mouth, from inside the mouth. And every time you try to make that realistic, like an actual elephant, it didn't work. So we ended up going with a solution that basically wraps this lip around the mouth. And it's a cheat, but it gets the job done. Another thing that was <laughs> very frustrating with Tantra is that if you had a frontal shot, then the mouth would be completely hidden behind the trunk and the tusk and all that. So all you had to work with for dialogue was how you stretch and squash things up and down. And it just uh, was sometimes very frustrating. And that's why if you look at the film again, you'll see that in a lot of shots, Tantra would start facing the camera in a frontal shot and I immediately would just tilt it away from camera so I could get a sense of where the mouth was, so I could work with that. It's just a cheat that I use a lot because there was no other way to get performance if, if all you had to do was squash and stretch and just the mouth shapes and, and, and the eyes. I'm, I'm really forgetting how this thing was put together. <laughs> so sorry about that. Another thing that was uh, very time consuming was to get the wrinkles on his trunk. And we could have done this, and that would have been fine. But to me, that didn't give the sense of uh, that skin that we wanted. So I made a point to make sure that the wrinkles have a little bit of overlapping. So there's always this edge that it's time consuming, but it makes a huge difference because all of a sudden it feels like hard skin. And elephants have very hard skin. We actually, while we were researching this, we were sent on a trip to interact with a live African elephant, and we got to fit it, and we got to uh, ride it even. So I rode this elephant, and I was wearing shorts, and uh, they have hair. Not a lot of people know this, but they have a lot of hair. And this hair is not like human hair. This hair is like thick. It's actually like needles. So I actually got my legs hurt pretty bad from riding this elephant. And that's how I learned, I gotta make sure I represent that skin as hard as it really is, you know? And as for those hairs, of course, being a 2D animated film, we couldn't really depict all that texture, but I still tried to have clumps of hair here and there, so you'll see that, oh, there, I remember, there was a bend, there was a bend always to the ear. There you go. It kind of resembles Tantor, I think. That's as close as I'm going to probably get today, so I should have prepared better for this. A lot of it has to do with where do I put all these details? There's ears and there's a trunk and the... So a lot of times you would have to cheat things away just to get a composition that kind of worked. You know? He had those iconic four hairs. I don't even remember how this thing went. Something like that. Um, as if it weren't complex enough, now I would have to deal with overlap on those four hairs, you know. Something interesting about Tantra was that I could never get him to come to a complete halt. You would think that if I got a scene where he was, uh, there you go, 
where he was talking and he stopped talking and then the focus went to a different character, then, you know, that's easy. I just get him into a pose that has character and then I uh, let the other character play. But it turns out with all these overlaps, getting him to a full stop meant that you would still have to find the time to stop the trunk and the ears and you have to overlap all of them, you have the hairs and all that. So you would eat up easily 20 seconds of supposedly off time just trying to get him to come to a halt, you know? But that's what it was. Well, I can see his head is definitely big compared to his body now, so let's fix that. That's closer to what it should be. And these tasks would, uh, hold on. These tasks would be somewhere around here. Even the task, you'll notice, I'm trying not to have one single curve, but to have little bends around it. Just, it just, it feels more like bone. It feels more like it's a hard object. All right. Took me a while to get a hang of the anatomy of the legs and to also know where to put the wrinkles, where to not put wrinkles. Because if you try and do everything, it just becomes this unmanageable thing. Even on the trunk here, I see I, I put too many wrinkles. I got to choose groupings like here some, here some, and that's fine. When you try to put wrinkles everywhere, it just becomes really hard to read. All right, let's focus in on these feet, which are basically bowls. But even then, you have to make sure that the weight is, is present, that you feel the weight. So usually a lot of flesh work in this area here. The knee also had to have some skin on it. The belly's a little clumped up. This is what I love about drawing. Say what you will about CGI, but I just love the idea that you can make judgment calls as you go. What's hard, what's soft, what's floating, what's heavy, you know? That's, that's really what I love about drawing. That, that's something that uh, only drawing has. You cannot really replicate it with anything else. You know? to go a little faster here. I usually draw very tight. My, my drawings, my animation drawings, for those who have seen them, you'll see that, you know, I'm not really leaving a lot of rough work for my cleanup crew to follow up. I'm, I'm usually asking them more to follow and keep what's already there than to try and complete my drawings. Um, that's just something that it's built in with me. I, I just love to really work it all the way. I can tell there's something wrong with this. I'll have to flip this around and see what's happening in this leg that's not working. All right. So you can see how Tantra is way much more time-consuming than any other character. But once again, can't help it. That's just how I draw. The spine needs to be at least hinted at. So I would add this little line here to give the impression that there's a certain structure to the back. And it does help a lot when you're turning this character around and when you're moving it to really help uh, convey the sensation of anatomy.
So you can see how much effort I put into making sure that the skin is pushed here and it's stretched here. This is, when you're doing something that's organic as an elephant, I just really think it's a missed opportunity not to try and, and represent that in your drawings. The trade-off is that you do have to do very complex drawings. So let's uh, flip this around and see how bad it is, really. Um, image. Hmm. It's actually not so bad. I, I, I would do, uh, let me copy this first before I do some alterations that I'll regret. But I feel that there's something. His back was a lot higher, I seem to remember. Yeah, that feels right. Once again, I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of things that I used to do with this, but it's been such a long time that I... All right, so let's put Tantor alongside Doppler here. You know what, let's flip him around. Um, figured uh, something more current. How about some um, stuff from uh, Klaus? If I can remember actually how to draw this guy, even though it's been recently, I actually didn't do much of the animation. So I'll have to, you have to give me a second to kind of remember. If it was something like this. And uh, yeah. Let's uh, there you go. So let's. Uh, uh, this is gonna be. Oops. Interesting. That's a strange effect. I'm gonna use this as kind of my model shit, just so I remember how this guy looks. So I'm gonna put it aside and uh, I'm going to try and do a pose that's a little more interesting than that. see my first drawing is nothing pretty it's just something to try and capture some emotion I'll go back in later and I'll figure out how to make it more appealing It's just about getting some basic sense of what the attitude would be. Oh wait, no, I don't need this. Who 
clearly about drawing. But I think with a little work, I can get it to be passable. See, that's starting to be a little better now. Like I said, don't worry too much about your first sketch. To me, it doesn't, I mean, if you can do a great expressive first sketch, go ahead and do it. I just can't. For me, this is the process that I follow. It's a really crappy first drawing, but hopefully it has enough appeal, enough of a intention that I can keep working at it and get something out of it. Still wondering, yes, this is 2D, and the teaser trailer is 2D, and this is how we animated the character. Exactly what I'm doing right now. All right, better. Not bad, actually. Let me flip it around and see. Yeah, I can live with that. If I were doing a... Um, holy moly, where do I get the just a regular wheel of color in this thing? Help? No one knows? Is this a wheel of color? Anybody? All right, I was gonna do a bit of a color demonstration, but I don't think I can do it like this. Well, I guess I can try. Hmm. All right, I'll try. It's probably not gonna come out great, but let's try anyways. Um, Really? This is as thin as it gets? Okay. And uh, I'm not someone who really does a lot of uh, color work. I tend to just do a quick pass uh, to convey volume and light, but really not a lot of it.
I guess that will do. Ooh, that's way too shiny. what pulse I have that's because I'm working on Cintiq I, I really still don't do well with the digital color but hey you may have to jump in and remember and remind me what the colors were on this thing See how archaic my method is? I know about the magic wand and all about that. I just choose not to use it. This is how I work. Yeah. Trust me, it'll be better in the end. Wow, this thing is really leaving a lot of residue. Keys here. Um, I guess I'll have to use the color picker. Is this how? Okay, I guess I'll do it this way. I better give up on the color thing. The color pick isn't working. Sorry, guys. I thought I would do a quick color demonstration, but we're running out of time. So I'll just do a couple more um, uh, expressions, I guess. Let me see how this fits with the uh, other guys. All right, so we've got five minutes. Any requests? Anything? Klaus? Oh, man. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> All right, let me. I drew Klaus even less than I drew Jesper, you know, so I don't think I even remember. Um, <clears throat> but let's try at least to do a quick sketch. Interesting. Um, I honestly do not remember. I think I did like three drawings of this guy. So it's gonna be something that kind of 
looks like Klaus, but not really. I can't remember how I was cutting goals. I don't even know if he had a ponytail. He had a ponytail? He did? All right. Not going to be Klaus. It'll have to be something else. Actually, wait, I actually work better when it's smaller. So let's try this. How close am I? Not too close, right? Well, it's your fault. I think I'm gonna give up on this whole thing. It's not really coming any closer to what it should be. Sorry about that, guys. I keep drawing characters that I don't know how to draw. Let's go back to what I do know how to draw. So. So this is something that probably is actually a good idea to do right now, because I don't have time to do a full drawing. But if I tell you that if I'm going to do an expression sheet, this is pretty much what I would do about it. I would do a whole bunch of little doodles like this. Just trying to capture expressions. And then I choose from all of them. And that's how I would do an expression sheet, you know. to get some extreme poses in there, like an extreme stretch and squash. Very hard to actually not have the visor. Hold on, let me cheat this. Not to have the visor of his hand get in the way of his expression, but I'll cheat it. We're wrapping up. Okay, looks like we're out of time. So I'm just gonna probably just put this up on the screen. The greatest hits of today, all the drawings that did not fail. I should point out that I hate doing uh, this kind of demonstrations because my process is so, it's such a fight against the drawing. 
and it takes me a long time to actually get something worthwhile. So what you saw today was actually a good representation of what I do. Throw away most of my crap and only keep a few at the end of the day. So thank you. All right.